I thought the press for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was pretty much over, I thought the suspicion would all be gone, and then I get this interview from Square Enix producer Tetsuya Nomura. And he said some very interesting things and very surprising things. So the article first talks about the one-winged freak of nature with the 10-footer, Sephiroth. So what was Nomura's reaction to having this character in Smash Bros.? I think Sephiroth was pretty unexpected, so it was fun to see how surprised people were. Considering he was the second Final Fantasy VII character to be added to the game, I was somewhat unsure if it was okay for him to take up one of those precious slots in the roster. I was relieved to see that people responded positively to his announcement. So because Cloud is already in the product, he was not comfortable having Sephiroth there. So this tells me that he knows it's a waste of money to pay Square Enix twice with no return on investment. So clearly there's something wrong here. It was a dumb decision, and now I have closure that I know somebody who works in the industry shares that same sentiment. I've been saying all this time. Sakurai lives in a bubble. He has no grasp on marketability despite other fighting game directors having that grasp quite firmly. I'm aware that Sephiroth made a lot of the fanboys happy. But there was no need to have him because there is no fan base out there that's going to spend more than six measly dollars to get him. Or Sora for that matter. Cloud was enough. I said as much very early into the DLC schedule. The only logical reason why you would want to willingly waste this money is because Sakurai personally wanted the character. If there was an uproar about a character he wasn't fond of like Altair or Ezio, would he consider this suggestion? Of course not. He knows what fun is after all, and the consumer doesn't. Let's do some more math, shall we? Let's say if this were some alternate reality, I'm a consumer that doesn't have a Switch, but I have PlayStation and play games on PC. If I see a character in Smash Bros. that I was really into, what's the least amount of money I need to pay so I can play as that character? I would need to buy a Switch Lite, a copy of Smash Bros. Ultimate, and the DLC character, and in total without taxes added, I'd be paying $266. So let's compare. How many Smash Bros. customers that already have the Switch in the product, how many customers do you need to reach that same total? 266? The answer is 44. That means a first-time Smash player would be spending as much money for a DLC character as 44 fanboys. So what's the more appealing number? A million times 266, or a million times 6? It's a no-brainer, go after the fanbases that have more money to give you. And for anybody wondering, buying a regular Switch would make that total $366, and it would take 61 fanboys to total that. If you're going to make a terrible decision, at least don't spend money doing so. Choose a useless character like Dunn Sparse. At least it wouldn't cost money, and it would deliver the same results considering the hardcore Smash community will collect all the DLC anyway. People see this as a big deal, but they're only big deals to those that have Smash Bros already. Not even Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts fans, because there was already that initial attempt to win them over six years ago. Nomura has more to say and I will certainly share it. The fan reaction exceeded even what I'd imagined, so I was extremely happy. Sara's handshake with Mario at the end of the trailer was an element we were insistent about including, so I hope fans noticed and enjoyed it. It's truly an honor that Cloud, Sephiroth, and now Sara not just one or two of the characters I helped make, but three of them have been invited into a world that features such an impressive group of characters. I had been hoping to repay Mario and friends someday, as I've greatly enjoyed so many of their games, so this opportunity has made me so happy. In fact, nothing makes me happier than seeing the fans' joy towards the three of them, and I hope that Mr. Iwata would be pleased with their inclusion, too. As I said just now, you're only pleasing Smash Bros. diehards, which are the vocal minority. No casual Kingdom Hearts fan is going to appear online out of the blue to thank you personally. It's the same fans that have already had soccer eyes back for 20 or 25 years now. Of course Nomura would be extremely happy, it's his creation after all. But to say you insisted on having the whole roster kowtow to this kid that's accomplished nothing and piggybacked off of two larger brands to have some semblance of relevancy is just laughable. And let's be serious, this was not for Iwata. Iwata would not want his lasting legacy to be an unprofitable Disney kid fetish that would have lost the company even more money than they already have when Iwata was alive. I don't know what kid of manipulation that Sakurai told Nomura or Nomura just watched the Sakurai video to find out the reason, but Iwata would not have wanted this. Iwata would have been more concerned about getting the company out of the hole that it was in. 
he was a sound, savvy businessman, not a perverted money mark like Sakurai that spent lavishly on IPs and didn't care about making it back. Sakurai should be ashamed of himself. As a matter of fact, I know he's ashamed of himself because he always makes excuses rather than tell his paying customers the truth about the decisions he makes. Well at least there's some hope in this industry. I definitely would want Nomura to be the director of the next Smash Bros game over Massive Ego. I'm not holding my breath that Sakurai is going to give up his big porcelain throne.